Hey guys, so in this video I'm doing some emergency surgery on a load-bearing wall. The sill plate in the corner here was badly damaged by water and termites, so I have to replace it. But before I can do that, I have to temporarily support the load above it. So there's lots of different ways to do that, but in my case it's easiest to just build a temporary wall. And I already found out where the ceiling joists are. So I'm basically just going to put a stud b beneath each ceiling joist to support it. Now when you build a temporary wall, it's really important to make sure that it's plumb. And a great tool to use to help you do that is a plumb bob. Now when you measure out your studs, you want them to be slightly longer than they need to be. I went with a sixteenth of an inch over. And what that's going to do is kind of push up the load a little bit so that when you go to replace the sill plate, you have plenty of room to get the new one in. Here I'm putting screws in to secure the studs. And when I drive screws in on an angle, I like to first drive it in straight and then I back it out and then finish driving it in on the angle. I just find that trick to be a little bit easier. Each stud gets two screws on each end. The way I edited the video here it looks like I'm only driving one screw in for each stud, but just know that each stud gets two screws on each end. And if you look closely here you can actually see how high I lifted the ceiling. I ended up cutting a new stud to replace this one to fix that gap. So I think it's important for me to explain my specific situation here. Um, the exterior of my house is brick, so it makes it really costly and difficult to access this from both sides. And typically when you're doing a repair like this, you would take down your siding, take down the sheathing, and you would address the problem from both sides. But I can't do that right now because the outside's brick. And it, it doesn't actually make sense for me to do it right now because I plan on putting an addition behind this wall eventually. So when I do that, that would be the time to address this completely. I'll actually most likely be completely rebuilding this wall anyway. Now, when you're removing the damaged stuff, you just you want to remove everything that's like spongy. Like if you can take a screwdriver and poke it into the wood, then it needs to go. So in my case here, there were two layers of wood. My sill plates on these walls are like three pieces of wood, and the top two had to go, but the bottom one was in good enough shape to support the load. And in order to get this stuff out, I just used whatever tools I had. Uh, the reciprocating saw was great for cutting the nails out, and this multi-tool was good for getting straight cuts. And after that, um, I basically had to use a chisel and a screwdriver and a hammer to just kind of chisel this piece out. It was hard to get to since I couldn't access this from the outside. So as I said earlier, there's one more piece of wood in here that I didn't have to replace. And this wall is going to be completely rebuilt in the near future anyway. So I'm not using pressure treated here, mainly just because I didn't have any on hand at the time. And I didn't feel it was necessary to go buy some. But if you're doing a repair like this, especially if it's going down on top of concrete, you definitely want to use pressure treated. And if it's going onto concrete, then you'll also need a way to fasten it to the concrete, either tap cons or some other kind of hardware. This is one of those moments where I was glad that I made the temporary wall slightly taller than the actual wall needed to be, because what that did, it, would, it pushed these studs up so that I had plenty of room to just slide this piece of lumber in there. It would have been a lot more difficult to get this in if I hadn't done that. 
So in closing, I just want to say that it's extremely important that if you're going to attempt a repair like this, that you understand how to properly support the structure. What worked here for me won't necessarily work for you, so you really have to do your homework. But I hope that this video was a good demonstration of at least the basic concept of how you would go about repairing damage like this in a load-bearing wall. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful, and I'll catch you on the next one.